Hey everyone, welcome to Lightroom in a Snap. In this week's episode, I'm going to show you a hidden trick you can use to match any color in an image or across two images when working with masks. The trick I'll be showing in this episode is currently only possible in Lightroom Classic. Unfortunately, it does not work in the cloud-based Lightroom app. If you find this video helpful, please be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel to make sure you don't miss new videos as they're released. If you'd like to directly support the creation of these videos, you can do so by clicking on the thanks button to make a voluntary contribution of any amount. I truly appreciate everyone that's contributed so far. Now let's take a look at this older photo from a 2018 trip to Colorado. I've already made some adjustments to it, both through the global panels and with some masks to target more specific areas. Besides brightening the image and adjusting the white balance to offset a strong bluish cast from the neutral density filter I used to extend my shutter speed, I also used a combination of the calibration, tone curve, and HSL panels to balance the colors and add some saturation and vibrancy to them. I then used a few different masks to make a subtle adjustment to the reflected color in the water, boost the yellow aspen leaves in the background, add some pop to the aspen trunks, and finally burn down parts of the image to add in some localized contrast. At this point, one thing I find still a little bit off is the balance of colors in the water. Here on the right, we obviously have some very warm tones that were created by the early morning sun starting to hit the tops of the surrounding aspen trees. That glow, along with the way the stream was flowing around the rocks, was really what compelled me to compose the shot. On the left, however, the water wasn't picking up that golden reflected light, and it's rather flat in comparison, creating some unwanted tension between the two halves of the frame. One way I could address that is by creating a new brush mask and maybe using the temperature slider to add some warmth back into the water. That actually doesn't look too bad, but it's not what I'm actually here to show you, so let's undo that. Another option, and the one I want to show you, is using a brush mask with a color selection. I'll create a new mask, then scroll down in the Masking Adjustments panel to find the color option. By clicking on this X'd out gray box, a new window pops up showing a complete spectrum of colors. There are some preset colors I can choose from, or I can use the eyedropper to select any color of the spectrum to essentially paint into the scene via the brush mask. The downside here is I still have to eyeball the color selection to match that golden reflection in the water. But what's hidden with this tool is I can actually use that part of the image to make my color selection. Now you notice that when I move my mouse away from the color selection box, the eyedropper disappears and clicking anywhere on the image just creates the brush mask and closes the box. Here's the trick. Simply click and hold down your mouse button while you have the eyedropper tool available within the color box and keep holding it down as you drag your cursor out of the box. As long as you keep that mouse button held down, you can select any color within the Lightroom Classic interface. That means I can pull a color from one of the other photos down in the loop, from the histogram if I wanted to, or most importantly, from within the image itself. Watch what's happening to the white selection box within the color window. As I drag the eyedropper around, it's updating in real time to show the current color. The saturation slider is also automatically adjusting to account for the intensity of the color beneath the eyedropper. Now, using this trick, I can move over to that golden reflected light in the water, hover over the spot I want to match, and once I let go of the mouse button, it's selected in the color box for me. I can now start painting in that exact color match to another part of the image. Now, you do want to be gentle with this kind of work as it's quite easy to overdo it, and the added color won't look very natural if you go too far, but this is an example of how you can get a little creative in your editing process when working with colors like this. As I toggle the brush mask on and off, you can see the subtle difference that I've made by using that color selection from within the image. For now, let's disable that mask so I can show you the other cool trick you can use with the color tool. Since this trick allows you to pull a color from anywhere within the Lightroom Classic window, you can also use the reference view that I showed last week to pull up another image from which you can quote unquote grab a color. Let's just do something a little goofy here and pretend I want to pull the brilliant blues of the sky in this Aspen photo. I simply need to hit Shift plus R to open the reference view, then drag that image in. In all fairness, this Aspen photo is one that's still a work in progress, and looking at it now, that blue is probably way too intense, but we're going to use it just for the sake of example here so you can see how this works. Once I've got it set as the reference photo, I'm ready to use the same color matching trick to create a mask, open the color tool, hold down my mouse button while I have the eyedropper tool available, and drag over to the blue sky in the reference image while I'm still holding down the mouse button. Once I'm confident I have the right color, 
just let go of the mouse button to lock in the selection. I can then close out reference view by hitting the D key. Now I can paint that selected blue into my active edit. Maybe I remember that blue sky reflecting in the water's surface, but it wasn't captured well by the camera sensor. I can just start painting it in with a brush mask and then tweak things as necessary to try to make it look natural. In this case, the initial result is far from natural. It's pretty terrible, actually. To dial it down a bit, I can either click on the color tool again and adjust the saturation slider, or there's always the mask amount slider available as well to dial it down. Maybe I want to darken that blue selection a little bit too. As always, every other mask adjustment is still available to you. Heck, if I wanted to, I could really dial it in by intersecting the brush mask with, say, a luminance mask, so it's only impacting the darkest areas of the water. Or maybe just the midtones, which I can easily select by then adjusting the luminance range. This result isn't what I had in mind, obviously, when we started this little walkthrough, but I do think the combination of that color selection from the other image, and then refining it by dropping down the saturation a bit while also adjusting the mask amount, and intersecting it with that luminance range to only target the midtones of that part of the image, I think this actually looks kind of nice. The end result is I have a nice, subtle bit of color that I've pulled in from either another part of the same image, or, as you just saw in this second example, from an entirely different image via the reference view. As always, if you're feeling a little lost or you got some questions, feel free to drop a comment below and I'll get back to you. Or if you weren't aware, I do also offer one-to-one -one sessions via Zoom where we can take all the time you need to learn more about editing in Lightroom. And with that, this has been Lightroom and a Snap.